Patrick Bull Ramos, for my money and my know-how and who I've worked with over my years, was the finest all-around pure heel in the business. Bar none. And I've worked with them all from Buddy Rogers on up. Thanks for having me guys. Are you guys out there in TV land, if you don't know who I am, my name is Sin Bodhi. I'm the Warlord of Weird, formerly Kazarni of WWE SmackDown. It's my privilege to be in here to get my ass kicked by all these good fellows from ECW here in Portland, Oregon. I'm going to run through some stuff. Just to start out, I don't know who knows what. Please forgive. So, I mean, I've traveled all over the planet. I've worked with all sorts of guys, shapes and sizes, on belief. Here to do whatever you guys do. I'm sure you guys know stuff that I don't know, and vice versa, and you know stuff he doesn't know, and everything. I ask dancing around with each other, and when we're working and figuring out stuff, we can pull it out of each other. It's, it's my job as, it is a, as a road wrestler. I go to different cities, or different crowds, or different styles of wrestlers. You know, Memphis is a different city than, than uh, I don't know, like Detroit. London, England, we call it San Juan, Puerto Rico, all these different places, they want different stuff, and you gotta understand how to switch gears. So I don't know what kind of stuff I'm assuming. Here is a very traditional, sort of American style, ABA, MBA style. So that's maybe kind of sound pretty basic. Um, let's start out, we'll just, well, let's just start locking up and see what happens from there. That be, I think uh, if you lock up, Incorrectly, and not, not that there's incorrect, if you lock up unbelievably, they're not gonna buy anything you do after that. So, proper lock up is gateway to a fun match, a believable match, something that's gonna make the people buy tickets for next time, for next time, for next time. Let's see, uh, oh, well, let's we'll watch out, see what's up. Some of the drills we would do, 
<coughs> Japanese dojos and some of the old school dojos, and you get blown silly and then go to work because you'd have to figure out what do I do while my clock is on here, while my, I've got no gas in the tank? What do I do now when I'm at this, this level instead of just starting out fresh? And different dudes too, I mean, especially the big, big gimmick guys, they don't got a lot of fuel in the tank, but how do you pull a five star match out of a 400 pound guy? I mean, I've been on a lot of shows where I'll wrestle this one 600 pound guy. Nobody wanted to wrestle him. Like, that's, a, that's the funnest thing ever. That's a human monkey bars right there. You can play with that guy all day. You just have to know how to you know, ride that vehicle. You have to know how to move, how to not put yourself in pitting predicaments. Like, you work a bigger, bigger guy. Say, work working you and you're. Seven feet tall, six foot five, whatever, 400 pounds. Well, if you put me down with 10 moves and I kick out, well, I'm built like a dumb beetle when you're close. But if you're six foot five and I'm just this little schmucky, like I'm 6'2, 230, and I wrestle with guys where I'm usually the basketball, I'm the tiny guy. So if I'm getting, you know, my 20 shots in and I take the one shot, I'm gonna turn myself inside out, but instead of laying in the middle of the ring, to give that big guy the pinning predicament, he goes and pins me, and I kick out, he looks like a pussy. So if we're in there and he's here, he's the big six foot eight monster that doesn't know Jack. So boom, I take that one shot. Instead of me taking my bump here, where he has to kind of cover me, or he looks like an idiot, I literally should take that bump, you know, flail somehow where it looks, go the momentum that I'm going, get here, or go on the other side where he just doesn't have the opportunity to pin me. Hence, he doesn't look like a jerk. And I don't look like a dumb beetle for shit on his size. Like I can, you know, I can survive a nuclear war and the seven four monster with twenty abs and eight hundred muscles and all that right. jazz. So you don't want to, whether it's working a big guy or doing something with little guys, you always have to think, how do I maximize what I have to work with? Maybe you're work, what's even harder is if you're working with a small guy that doesn't know much, let alone a big guy. And you don't ever want to think about it in a way like, oh man, I gotta work with so so look at it as a challenge. And uh, um, let's see, how can we do that? Like working working the big show is easy because you take one shot and then you can go flying out of the ring and sell and crawl and scamper and whatever, and you can either stay there or you can finally get pissed off and come out chase you and you gotta run in and you can cat and mouse with him all day long. Less you do to him, the less he does to you, the more you do to him, kind of even the odds. Yes, sir. So I prescribe to the theory that um, if you go for a lot of covers, it really shows that you're trying to win. Yeah. So, but in essence, that's too many false covers is what I hear you saying. So maybe limit that. When in Rome, if, if we're if we're equal size, so we're, I'm going to go for as many covers. You're going to go for as many covers. Where the time is right. It's a every rule is made to be broken. The standard rule is go for as many covers as possible. But um, if you're working Triple H and he's he's a big boy, but he's not that much bigger, where he's not going to be like Big Show or whatever, you still like he's not going to go for as many covers because everybody's going to know whether he's, he's bigger, he's got more experience, and he's he's known, so he's got that infamy about him. So he's going to almost he's going to play that underdog spot for you to have that. So the only way he can get heat on an underdog is if he lets you try to do stuff and shows it. Well, you're not the super duper baby face that's going to get up on him. He's just some standard heel. He's the superhero heel. You're the underdog babyface. So you've got to try your best and show well, this guy ain't doing much. He's not going to do much. But as soon as Triple H gets cocky, or whatever, then you know takes his time too long, gives you a second to recuperate while he's busy hot dogging or whatever. And he drops that elbow and you move and flusters him and it opens the door for you. It's a believable door open. You know, but he's not going to go for those covers because you know he's a big champ or whatever. You're the the brand new guy coming in for a trial match or whatever, well, the fiction of it says, maybe in real life or whatever, maybe the, maybe in real life, he'd beat his ass in five seconds. I don't know, maybe he could beat your ass in five seconds. But the fiction of it is, he's Triple H, you're the new guy. So it's just like, like watching a movie, you know, like Robin Hood can chew through every night on the, on the thing, you know, until he gets to an opponent that fictionally is an equal adversary. So if you're working somebody on even ground, and your fail-safe rule is go for as many covers as possible. But when you're working with a guy that's built in gimmick, like I, I'm a creative gimmick. What I do is I'm, I'm the carnival guy, and that's that's me. That's what I do. I, I'm a 
do all sorts of weird carnival stunts on top of wrestling, and that's me. It's not a saddled character. Vince McMahon gave me a stupid ass name in Kazarni, but the whole carnival character is me. But that's created, that's a, a, a developed and, and learned thing. A natural gimmick is like a big show or a Bundy or something like that. Bundy's gimmick because he's a big fat guy. Big show's gimmick is a big time tall giant guy. So when you're working with that kind of a natural gimmick, you're gonna have to take your story, and think out of the box. Well, big show just punches me one time, I should die. So, but that's not, that doesn't make yeah. it a very fun match, you know? So you've got a rope and dope him, you've got a cat and mouse him, and then when you do get that punch, if it's not time for the finish, you've got to make that punch look like, holy boom, over, over you go, and wherever you are, so he can't just paint it. You're doing him a favor as well as yourself. No, I did that. So now he's got to be like, and if he's smart, he'll put it over the, fuck, I hit that guy so hard, he threw it in the ring, I can't pin him, I gotta go get him. And as he's climbing right. through, you can, you know, whatever, do something, so I can get a little, that will help show people that you're in the game. Because nobody wants to cheer for anybody that doesn't have any any fire, whether they know they're getting fed in the lines or not. You know, if we're, we're working and, and it's a it's a squash match or whatever, I'm, I'm the Triple H guy or whatever, you're the, the greenhorn. Well, if I just come in, poof you, poof you, and you just go down like a sack of potatoes, nobody's gonna care that you're down. Nobody wants to see you get up. Hulk Hogan yeah. made a career getting up. Didn't do any fancy moves. You ever see Hulk Hogan do a swan, swan or, no. or a no. style clash or a no. 105 billion <laughs> degree? Yeah. Saw him do a drop tumble in Japan. Right, you know, <laughs> that's the really? like biggest thing I ever saw. You know, that's, that's Hulk Hogan's X Division move, the drop tumble. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, but to take a different level is, you know, like a Ricky Morton or a Ricky Stebo or a Shawn Michaels. They're fighting from, from what we'd say the bootstraps, they're fighting from underneath. So even though they're getting their ass kicked 90% of the match, they're still, like you're beating me up, you clog me and just, boom, come out. Boom, you champ, first off, I'll get you a whole other thing. But I'm selling, I'm not getting back up and no selling, I'm fucking I'm giving it my back, I'm giving it my face, whatever, give me a little bit of that. on the cell even though I'm, I'm fighting. Or you ever seen Flair and Steamboat? You be on the cell. Here's Steamboat. I'll be Flair. He turn around pop and I boom. Good shot. Boom. Bam. Boom. Bam. Boom. Here's the That'll be the cut. But they're just trading. Or Steamboat's on the cell. He's fighting from literally from underneath. <coughs> Staying on. Ricky Morton would do the same thing. Shawn Michaels would do the same thing. Shawn Michaels is an exception because he would cheat. He would bend the rules, and that's how I think, I personally think, he got to be how good he is. He would, he'd reap the benefits of babyface, it was time to be babyface, but then he'd reap the benefits of being the heel all in the same match. He could do stuff that was a little too heelish for regular babyfaces, a little too babyface for regular heels. He sort of cheated those things, but the long story short is, if you're fighting, that's staying alive. And just to get back to the point, you kind of on me, let the guy breathe, let the guy have selling time. So you're hitting me, oh, fuck, turn around. I'm bring you where it's gonna be, where am, where am I open, what am I giving you? Like they always say, like, you know, keep your dukes up, but keep your dukes up with something open. So I was saying, carry the guns. Boom, oh, here. Now I technically have my, my guard up, but I'm open, boom. I got my guard up here. Hit me in the back, hit me in the guts, whatever. So if you just hit me in the back, right? Right here. But you can give me space to fight back. If you're, if you're here, I can't fight you back. So and you can't sell nothing either. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have time to sell. You, it's called breathe space. You don't have time to, you know, it's, 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 it's clustering, it's crowding. Like if, if you're down on the cell, How's he supposed to sell while I'm going like this? Doing all this stuff to him. But if I how's it supposed to digest that? Yeah, they can't they can't see what's going on. Like once upon a time I was watching an early episode of uh, TNA with Christian. 
one of wrestling's most wrestlerly wrestlers. I agree. <laughs> and we're watching, and he's got it going like this. I'm like, what do you think? He goes, I don't get it. Now, if Christian can't get it, how do you expect a fan watching from TV or watching from his couch watching the TV and get it? The plumber, the lawyer, the astronaut, whoever's watching yeah, as a wrestling. straight fan, right? People that don't know wrestling yeah. aren't going to get it. Yeah, you need to give people time to digest. If you're in a bar fight, you're going to suffer somebody. You're going to walk away if you're going to do it. If you're going to be great enough or stupid enough to go face to face, it's going to be bam. Why do we, why do, we do this? In wrestling, so he is well back. That's right. So the cheap seats know exactly what's going on. Why do we do this? So they can see what's coming. Why does why does one of the wrestler sign? What's that? Universal takeover sign? Yeah. All that. So it's 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 to give people digest time. You know, because the reality of it, if we were shooting, they'd be over one way or another. It'd be over fast. <laughs> yeah. But I mean why like if he's made this and he's down. And the referee's checking on him. Why, if I was going to get fast enough, why would I just pull out and lace him? Why do I go like this? Why do I start doing this around the referee's back, reaching my tights and winding it all up? You know what? It's that whole, you think you're going too slow, so he's going to hit me. If you think you're going too slow, you're probably going to Or slow down. Or slow down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you think you're going fast. Yeah, see, it's right another word that runs through. Like, if he's hitting me and I'm just I'm on a straight cell. I mean, that's going in slow mo, but as far as the fans who see it, they're seeing in real time. So we can be thinking, geez, that's moving slow, but it's not. Now, if we were going, it looked like two pretty little guys in a bar fight yeah. trying to sort out their issue. That's all it's going to look like. Going fast is rushing and it's sloppy and it just doesn't look good. Like, and you're gonna make more mistakes. Exactly. Next one. Um, if you go faster, if your body's going faster than your brain can think, you're gonna get ahead of yourself. So if we're working a spot, if you're on the cell and you're coming up, I'm saying, come on up, I'm talking to you. And I start backing up and I'm like, uh -huh. what? 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 Uh -huh. And he didn't get what I was calling. Or I didn't even get what I was calling because it's happening too fast. And that's happening. Yeah, that's, 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 it's hopeless. When you're going off the roads and you don't know what's coming, it's and terrible. it's like yeah. I'm off the road and road. I'm like, what was that? <laughs> it's bad enough when the one guy doesn't get it, but when both guys don't get it, yeah. then you're really dangerous. Then you dangerous. Your body. Looks like crap. It's, it's dangerous, and it, it just stooges off to the fans. Something's phony. Yeah, something went wrong. So if, I, if I've got him on the cell and I want to call a spot to him, I'll find out, A, if he knows how to do it, B, if he's okay to do it, and C, are we cool? Are we good to go? You have the info that I relate to you? Like, yeah, so if he's on the cell. You've got so much time right here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm on, you know, on So I'm here, I mean, I can start calling from here if I feel like it, especially when you have a, a, a crowded room cheering. You know, like, I mean, like in uh, on SmackDown or whatever, we can literally be on opposite tag posts saying stuff each other. You can't hear past the ring because it's an ocean of, of bass and reverberation. And so from here, like in a, in a small room like this, I'm going to say, and he's looking at me, I'm going to gut. I'm going to gut. Again. Again. Duck, why don't you cut up? Simple as that. I'm gonna run him, so you sell wherever you sell, or you can sell. He's down here, whatever. So he's up on his feet, so that makes my job a little bit more difficult. All right, yeah, get away, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, bring it up to the spot, and we're talking about it back, like, hey, man. Two hip tosses in a drop. Okay, so that's the spot, all right, right? Two hip tosses drop. Yeah, do all that stuff. Referee, you count on me, get me out of the ring, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Alright. So whatever. I can do whatever I want. Just worry. Just 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 sprinkling details. The spot is the spot. I can stay here for forever. I can do all this great shit. Whatever I want to do. Great for the spot, brother?
so forth. You know, uh, the worst is like saying, he's on the cell or something coming on. He's on the cell to fight. So fight means whatever. He's taking whatever he wants to take. And if I say duck or something, or if he does it the second I call it, he doesn't have time to do whatever. So if I say, okay, come on, fight a little bit. Boom. Fight a little bit, whatever, whatever. Duck one, watch her drop kick. Well, if you just duck all of a sudden, and you just said the rest of the whole thing. You know, but if you're here, if I'm, I'm you now. Okay. So I'm fighting, and I'm listening. Boom, okay, I'm gonna duck. Here's up. Duck the big one, watch drop kick. That's your call, not to me. Okay. So I'm here, so, okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead, big one. Fuck. Big drop. You gonna start? Boom. So, we get ahead of ourselves, not doing each other any favors, and it looks goofy in, in front of the audience. The more you're selling, you don't gotta, I mean, you don't gotta have some boring match that has like two spots in it. I'm not saying that. I'll have all the spots you want in it. You find time to create those spots. Think of your spots as like the bricks of the match. The bricks don't stand strong unless the cement that's connecting the bricks is sturdy. So who cares if you can do an 850 degree shooting star super small package off the rafters if your model <laughs> doesn't look right or your cell doesn't look right if you're no selling like I'm a little bit bigger than you so when it just comes to smash mouth style you'd be on the cell for the most part I'd have to make a mistake and you move and I turn up on myself or whatever for you to get in your window and then you get your steam and then you start hitting the ropes once you kind of equalize stuff or whatever for someone after there you go, to do those fancy moves. So you're about to set up your big super duper triple lutz off the top ropes, whatever it is, <laughs> but not before. Boom, 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 boom. We're taking our time while you're on the cell. Move, here I come, I eat the buckle, plate the buckle. Boom, fuck. Just give me something little. Give me a punch, give me a, you know, give me something little. Give me a leg, punch me in the face. Duck, give me again, boom. And again, boom, what, you know, that kind of a thing. Give me another shot. You and whip me, I don't go. Reverse, you will get your spot. Then we'll work, we're working up into the spot. Um, what else we got? What, 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 what do you guys find difficult about me? You just covered my point. Uh, it's, you want to sell what your opponent's giving to you, but but fighting back. That's, fighting that's back. Huge. It's yeah. a two-way street of you need your heel needs to let you have space to fight back. If he's got the greatest cell in the world, but I'm right up on him, I'm all over him here. Well, his cell ain't gonna mean shit. But if I leave him to be, you're the ref here, like you know what I'm doing something. All right, you get me away from him, whatever. Well, well, what? And he's selling. Let him sell all over the place. Let him put that academy of warming performance. Let him the near the shit out of everything. Then I can come back. Why don't you tell me? Give me the guts. Not you. Here, here. Well, this would be another thing. Misdirect. We're magicians in here. That's why I like. I mean, I do like the freak show stuff in parallel with the rest. It's the same thing, just a different product. But it's all smoke and mirrors. It's all it takes skill, but it's all misdirect. You know, I can. T he's selling down here. He's here. I got him whatever. I want to give him some sell time. I'm going to talk to you. You're going to be my my shortstop. He calls me the referee all day long. I'm letting him sell. I'm going to go, he'd be a jerk over here. Referee, I don't like that fat old lady in the front row. Blah, blah, blah. Tell him to give me a schoolboy. This and that, this and that, and this and that. I'm to make sure he's all right. I think I clocked him by accident, but tell him to give me a schoolboy. Yeah, you get out of here, whatever. All right. I was like, I'll probably give him a schoolboy. You know, you have. We're communicating through him, third party, but also too, like how I said, kick me, I'm pointing to you and I'm saying, kick me. If you're the wrestler, you're the referee, so obvious. I mean, it's confusing as yeah. maybe. <laughs> well, maybe kick me. <laughs> but like in the match, maybe heel, ref. So I'm like, referee, you don't ever give me a grief or whatever. Cool. I just gave him an opening. Now, when I do clobber him back, or when I do try to, and you're up on me, it's just an excuse for me to get more upset where I can take the ante to a whole new level and 
then we can keep on taking the match up and up and up. Because if we just keep the match flat, we can keep the match 10 feet off the ground. If it's flat, it's flat. You've got to take it up and down, up and down on a gradual upslope. So if you're there, beating you up for whatever, because maybe I cheated in the first place, got the upper hand on you, you're flipping and flying, I didn't like it, I didn't understand it, finally I whack, whatever. Now you're on the cell. You're yelling at me that I throw it a complete time, and nothing, I hung it in the chin, it was, it was clear and all that stuff, it kicked me in the gut. And I was boy, you little son of a bitch, block. Shot. If I say block, Either or duck. Give me something after that. Nothing's worse than that. It's like the, 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 the blade three count. One, two, hey, is this the finish? I don't know why I'm getting. So just hit accordingly. If I say block and give me something specific, give me something specific. But if I just say fight, fire it up, light me up, or something generic or a little bit more colloquial, just hit accordingly. So boom, you just keep me in touch. You little motherfucker, block. Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting for the block. Yeah. Just hit me like hit me again. You know? Take your time. And especially you're on the cell. You just got throw it or whatever. So remember where you are. So you can't boom. Oh. Block. Give me a shot. Oh, a little bastard. Oh, again. Duck. Block. Now we can do it. Whatever we want to do, shoot reverse, eat a buckle, shoot reverse, uh, what, you know, up, up and over, eardrop. Can I do that? Yeah. No. I'm hurt. I'm blown up. We can talk to each other out there. Especially as a heel. It's easy to go out let your win. It's kind of the important thing that I've been working on picking up right now, too, because I just got to the level where I'm comfortable calling a match. So I, I'll call the baby step. or as a heel, depending on whichever. So I, I'm, I'm happy to do either, but there's different places to call. The other communication is important too. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What, you were saying that you're. I was just saying I just got. I, I've been doing this for about two and a half years now. Okay. Years. But I just got to the point where I'm comfortable calling my matches. Okay. So the next step for me is being able to communicate. Are you are you primarily a baby face or a heel? Primarily a baby face. I really enjoy working. My size is kind of not even doing that. Well, whatever the size, you can. You don't have to just call moves. All right. Do it. No. I mean, I call it directorial call. If you're on a cell, I'm the heel. Maybe it doesn't really matter, but if I'm the heel, whatever, I'd say uh, get, get on all fours. So I'm here. I'm I'm selling whatever. I'm looking at the people being a douche or whatever I'm doing. Get up on knee. Give me a shot. Boom. Uh, get on two feet. Give me a shot. Boom. Give me another shot. Watch me. Boom. Uh, I hear your shot in the bottom. Boom. So you can go wherever I'm telling you. Sit. He sit where I want him to sit. I'll put him where I want him to be. But I'm not going to put him where he's not going to go. I'm not going to take the spot there. If you use hundred pounds, I wouldn't go. I want to sit him out. There. I can take him and do what I want to do. Say, tell him the No, I'm going to tell him to move. Just tell him where I want him to go. If he goes there, cool. I'll find something else. Kelly, move back. <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. You know, just do the position. Not tell him to do a move, just tell him, you know, I'm, I'm still going to work on, on the direct of the movie. I want him to kick his feet. Same as like. Some call, and call can be simple. I mean, Call it like a simple, any call, call it duck. Sit, stay, move, lock, duck. Instead of a move, you mean, you mean stay. You mean stay. Like, directorial call is like, if he was telling me or whatever, if I'm just standing here like this, just sitting on it, doing nothing. I mean, I can tell, kick his foot, or he's coming up, 
I can start doing this. This serves no purpose except it looks like I'm just trying to put in some, put in some weight on it or whatever. Just find the little details. <laughs>
Oh, okay. What are they wrestling men anyway? We're pretty Okay, why are you wrestling so many bigger out here? Whether they have a penis or a vagina. Lila! Oh! oh that's on camera! <laughs> that, that's what those little ducky sound effects are for. <laughs> that's what that more. Okay. So, you know, we're here, we're looking. Oh, we're looking. Here, I'm ready to fight face. These, these are all <coughs> ducky mistakes. I mean, it's not like, it's not right or wrong so much as it is. It's, if you watch a movie and you're not a you're not a film critic, you're not a movie buff, you're not an expert at it, you simply watch and go, I bought that, or I am buy. You might not know why, or you read a book and you're like, eh, and yeah, you don't know. Oh, well, the epilogue was this, and Act Three was a little off, and it needed a few more, um, you know, sub chapters here. You just go, I get it, or I yeah, I didn't buy it. Guy or girl, I got her by about a foot and a hundred pounds. She just came running at me. Is that, is that believable? Even Robin Hood, like, you know, Zorro, Tarzan, they're smart baby faces, they're brave baby faces. They're not gonna run at a big ugly gorilla. They're gonna go, huh, how am I gonna handle this? You know, I'm gonna handle it, but how am I gonna do it? I'm not gonna go face first and just get eight. Well, that's been my main problem, is trying to find out what moves I can do. Well, you have to think size-wise, whatever, whatever the deal is. Like I say, about oh, looking at a 600-pound guy. Well, you gotta move. You, you gotta have him grab you, and choke you. And you gotta pop his ears. And you gotta sell him here. You know, tell the ref, all right, tell him to charge me. I'll move the last second. Go on to my left. Okay. You know, you gotta double talk to each other. And this is a singles match is a three-way dance between the heel baby and the ref. So here is. You wouldn't just charge right at me or whatever. Look, Put the act. This is, this is where your that's where your money is. So you're looking at me. You're like, that's down. You shouldn't, be shouldn't be scared, but you shouldn't be stupidly yeah, afraid. Right. You should be aware. You know, Robin Hood didn't. Like maybe roll out of your way. Or something. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you're scared, if you're looking at me and you're deciding, okay, what's this big ogre gonna do? You know, you're smarter, you're faster. That's gonna be your role in this in this story. You know, and you're looking at me like. All right, this thing's bigger and uglier, but I'm shit. So maybe, maybe, maybe you just uh, I'll tell the referee, duck. Okay. So I just want to jump away. Don't you decide to don't you just pick a side and duck? Most likely, you're, well, I'm gonna, rah, you know, whatever. Where'd you go? You know, <laughs> you know that kind of a thing or whatever. This is me being so small, you look even bigger. Yeah, but you wouldn't have just like, if you just ran right up to me and just right. max over. So we've got to give them a reason for eventually after you've moved out of the way, kicked and chopped and punched and scraped and everything until the time is right where I'm getting it. You ever see, do you know what Kamala is? Yeah. You ever see the baby face finally light up on Kamala, chop him, stop him, kick him, blah, 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 make a mistake, look at the too long, the baby face will get on him. Get on and he teased the bump. Tease it. The people want to see what it's about time to right, the bump. And then the baby face hit the ropes and he goes. And he plays the baby face. He didn't take the bump. And then by the time it's right, the baby face off or he just a splash or something. Then the baby moved. The call take his big fucking bump or whatever the case was. Then the baby would chop down a lot. I mostly I mostly work. As, as a heel, but if I work a bigger baby face, um, I was I always told him, I always said, uh, you know, the only thing I really want you to sell for me is when I go after your leg, you know, big, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the big muscle guys and stuff like that, and the crowd, if they see me attack that, they really want to see the guy kind of like clock of the real warriors, just kind of brush it off. So if um, if I'm working as, as a heel against a bigger baby face, it's believable. I think it's believable to the audience. I go after your leg, I get you down and I'm on top, and, you know, and I'm pounding on that leg. Whether it's leg or whatever it is, yeah. what, what you want to do is a smaller heel. Is you also want to figure out how to, this is a weapon. You're in yeah. a big, you know, yeah. whatever this is, a two-time bed of steel yeah. and, yeah. and all that. This is a weapon, and nobody's going to look wimpy by doing a job to this weapon. So if I'm a big, huge baby face, and you're a little heel, and I just beat you up, and you're hiding in that corner, and I take you on hot dogging around, move, and I come back in, wait for me, give me a second, so, I mean, I would have stopped if you 
be that fast, you know? So if you'd move, can you move now? I'd see that, I'd just, I'd put on the brakes. But if you move the last second, I'm here, uh, oh, you know, and now the ring is equalized up, you get on me. Boom, give me a shot. Boom, give me a shot. Boom. Boom, duck. Another shot. Ooh, another shot. Ooh, another shot. Ooh, we can go all day, whatever, until the heel's ready to cut the baby face off and run into a spot, whatever. Whatever, whatever it is. Easy thing to do. Uh, bear hug spots, but you just don't sit in it, just like in any hole. You don't. Know? One kind of like theory of it is. No such thing as a rest hole. You heard the term rest hole, right? It's like elves and lipstick lesbians. Do. They're, they're just the, the creature of myth. A rest hole is simply an incorrect term, just like how people say this is fake. It's not fake, it's fixed. And we're athletes, it's dangerous, who might not actually hate each other in the storyline, but it's fixed. You ever seen uh, Interview with a Vampire? Mm -hmm. You know the scene where they're in the in that vampire theater where it's vampires pretending to be humans, pretending to be vampires to entertain the public, who are humans. That's what we are. We're athletes pretending to be good guys or bad guys, pretending to be, you know, that's what we are. I mean, some guys in wrestling couldn't wrestle their way out of a white paper bag, and yet they're millionaires. Some guys are legit stone cold killers, but they have the goofiest, silliest gimmicks. You tell me the Matt Bournes of the world in that joint outfit. Couldn't stretch whoever the hell he wanted to stretch. He felt like, you know, that you could kick the crap out of Hulk Hogan if you felt like it. But he's got a goofy gimmick, and Hulk Hogan's the yeah. big, you know, Hercules, you know. So that's this. It's just all smoke and mirrors, and it's all fiction. Um, yeah. So like, you know, working in a bear hug, working in holds. If we give them that fiction and holds, if you're just sitting there, put me in. This one. If I just went, oh, uh, it's boring as shit. And say that you, I'm, I'm gonna jump up, so I just can't hang on. This is gonna blow him up in 10 seconds. <laughs> this, we be able to do all day long, okay? But whatever we're doing, keep it on there. Whatever we're doing, whether I'm in the proper saddle or I get to my feet, if we're just sitting here like this, well, who cares? But if I, we're working and I'm like, trying to get through it, ah, I give him reasons to tense up. You know, I'm grabbing it, there, holy shit. You know, whatever it is, Maybe when the time is right, I'll pull him back and ah, you know, whatever. Um, Say, so, uh, sell the years, I come back to you, right back to the barrel. Get it again, all right? I'll put this over. Holy fuck. It goes. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you that? Damn it. Put that one on the blooper reel. <laughs> Put that one on the boot. Let's try that again. All right. Take two. Fuck it up. Here we are. Watch the ears. Get it again. Huh. He's just staying there before he walked around over there. No need. He can just stay right there. He's got his shit. I'm just telling my shit. Get it again. And we're here. No bum. Ah, it sucks to be me. I got locked back into the same deal. So that would be you to me, you know. If you're the baby, I was a heel, that's where you'd wind up. Or whatever. Um, you could do it and like maybe, you know, maybe I prompt you to do this stuff or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Sal, look around. You know, I'm do it. Face, and I I mean, think this I'm is old school stuff. Right. But I mean as simple as like say we find these, we, we, we messed it. into it or whatever. We're here and we're working. Feel how light my hands are. Yeah. I'm working. I'm shaking my leg. I got my elbow, I'm just doing oh. stuff. Just, just holding hands. But it's just the details. Just faces, it's this, it's, it's both of us. It's the ref being there being God. like, do you give up? So yeah, hard. this hurts. <laughs> really hurts. It doesn't make any, you know, it takes a little effort to put the biggest details. And the little details are the big details. Like, you can know, all take a decent bump, that's fine. You're all big boys. That's good. Thank you. And <laughs> violent little girl. <laughs> but it's what we do with it. Like I mean, if we're gonna work the match. We've got five spots. We've got 25 spots. 
I'll do whatever you want, that's fine. But are we telling the story to initiate those spots? Are people gonna buy it? Like that movie that had to buy it. Or yeah, I really liked it. But that that movie could have used a few more hope spots. Or I didn't like the heel was wasn't made that heel, that heel was like a pure jerk heel or whatever. You're like, are you gonna equate everything in, in, in wrestling? Like, it's cool that that's right. Yeah. But like you could watch a movie like you can equate everything kind of in these wrestling terms because it's really just a psychology. Wrestling is really just an athletic form of a couch session, just psychology. The people come in and cheer, they can't yell at their boss, they can't do what Steve Austin does to his man or whatever, but they can come and yell at us. They can come and yell at us. Yeah, they can come and cheer and move and do all that. So we help them tell that story. Like in a movie theater, they gotta sit there and just watch the movie. Here they can be interactive, especially when you're like, shut up. Of course they're gonna bark back at you because you're giving them a reason, you're cerebrally bringing them into the match. So you give them cause and effect, and then all that jazz, like going back to the movie, like you can equate it to wrestling, like uh, take House of a Thousand Corpses, cool art, art directed movie or whatever, but that was a two hour squash match. There was, it was heels over with no hope spots. Whether it's two minutes or two hours, that's a squash match. And the heel was way cooler than the good guy. Good guy didn't get in shit, had no fight on, and laid down. So it's not like, it's not like if, if I, I'm, I'm in there and you're the big guy and I'm gonna do the job in two minutes and you're gonna give him one little shine spot. Well, it just shows that I got fight as a big face, but he took it as the big, ominous heel. I think you just pointed out for me why I never liked that movie. Thank you. Probably. Yeah, because I, you didn't get sympathy. Yeah, I, I wondered what it was. I'm like, I should like it. I'll, I'll, give, you another, I'll give you a silly example, a TV show. Uh, what is that, uh, Two and a Half Men. Okay, well, Charlie Sheen, he's the funny heel, mm -hmm. which is a contradiction to the book. That's like the DX heel. Mm -hmm. He's the cool heel, he's the Roddy Piper heel, the guy that you like to hate. Mm -hmm. And then the Bayface, his brother, well, I, don't, I can't stand him because he's supposed to be a Bayface, but I'm thoroughly annoyed by him. Now, maybe he is the heel, and I don't know, maybe I'm not getting it, but he's not a Bayface that I have any sympathy for. So when, you know, his divorce is this, or the next girl dumps him, or he's broke, I, I don't feel bad for him. I'm like, get a fucking job, you dummy. You know, go find out how hard is it to go pick up a bird just for the way he's squatting for all these other chicks that are giving you a hard time, you know? So you have to find a way to be likable or to be hated, you know? You're the baby face and I'm the heel, and I'm out there being cooler than you. I'm the baby face, and you're the heel. And you're up shit great. And you're probably gonna be looking for new territory right now. And it's not gonna be because of me, it's gonna be because of you. So you gotta sell, you gotta do whatever the case is. Likeable. And again, I go back to Hulk Hogan, made his career getting up. You know, he come out and brother, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And he's out there for the people, he gets sucker, he lay down, when the time is right, he had enough of it, he hulked up, which he actually calls, makes me laugh by the way. Um, there's a brother I'm hooking up. Anyway, I digress. Um, but you have to find you have to find those ways to be liked or be hated, and you're not gonna be liked if you just Lay down, and you might be thinking you're doing him a favor. Like, you guys are gonna work, so I'm like, okay, well, he's gonna beat me up. I know he's gonna get some really good heat on me, so I'm just gonna do the first kick in the gut. Yeah. No, you're not doing each other a favor at all. You gotta like, uh, I'm here the main face, jumping from behind. Oh shit! Hit me! Duck! Hit me! Hit me! That kind of like, I gotta be, and then when the time is right for the big cutoff, you know, maybe I start to get back on him, fuck you, boom, boom, give me a big boom. I throw it, boom. There's my big cutoff. This was the exchange. This was exactly that. But, you know, you brought it to me, I came back with you. I didn't just, as opposed to, jump in and trying to off the map at the time. Oh, God, kick me. Oh God, well I'm just, well who wants to cheer for this guy? This guy's got no fight in him. You know, or, and it's even worse, he gets up and he just goes like this. Yeah. Well that's the shit. You know, who wants to fight, who wants to root for the guy saying, hit me again, man. I can take him like a dick. You know, no. You don't, you don't want that. Right, reach for the audience. Yes. They're out there, they're here to cheer and boo. They want to, you know, root for who they want to root for. And if you don't give them a cause, they're gonna be like, eh, next match. You know what I mean? She's saying, 
very smart. Just tell me they're face up because this is your money. They can see the top of your head. Well, they don't know if you're Roddy Piper or if you're Martin Kennedy or if you're XYZ, whatever. They see this, but they have no cause to cheer for you. They need to see this. Jesus Christ, you know. As if they can help you. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. By cheering. Dusty all that Rhodes, thing. Ricky Steamboat, Ricky Morton, all these guys would literally. They call for help from the ref or from the from the fans. Ricky Morton would be like, here, you know, help. You know, look, he'd find some lady in the audience, some 60-year-old lady who ain't gonna do shit, but he's talking to her, you know, and, and she's like, to the next person, they need some help, you know, let's get the let's get this. Gonna pull on her screens. It's hot button, you light up, you ignite that one hot button, you're gonna work the room. You know, like Tracy Smothers is real funny. <coughs> Tracy Smothers is real funny about it as a heel. You come out, cut a promo, like, you know, you say, I want to take out my girl, you know, the divorce rate's going to go up in this crappy little town 100% or whatever. And they boo, and, you know, the guys would boo, whatever. And then he just started, he's working the crowd. Just, what do you love, Brad? If I come out there, everybody dies. Of course, they're going to fucking start reacting even more and more, and he gets all upset and goes to the face. Well, have the face. And so he's asking for it. So even though Baby was doing something here, though, it's warranted. You tell him, it's got nothing to do with high spots. And then you can do all those cool moves as it fits where it fits. Yeah, absolutely. Why? Like, I'm working right here. I'm just going to guess you got a handful of high spots. <laughs> no? Half a handful? Maybe. He does a frog splash. Frog splash, okay. So if, if we're not doing the proper stuff to get to that frog splash, if we just get right to it or either we haven't worked enough towards it, well, by the time you do it, it's just like, well, so what? But if we've earned it and you know, you're back and forth, you've come out with some, some shit that I've done, excuse me, to you, like this been evil or whatever, like you've been on me and on me, and I get to the throat and I'm working the throat and I feel too long. Now I come back and now you start fighting up and I switch it and you know, I switch reverse and I bend down for a backdrop and you move me up and you hit the ropes and then you know, and then you lace me and you lace me and I bump and I feed and I bump and I feed and then finally, what am going up with I think now people, because we built the action, you know? So. I really like the that once you've earned it, that's yeah. a very good way to describe it. A lot of guys, a lot of new guys, you like in uh, like a developmental system or whatever. They they just they walk they grew up watching Rock and John Cena so they just think to get to the ring they come to the ring they walk out cool whether they're the heel or the baby face and I look at the crowd because they're told not to look at the crowd which is the stupidest thing ever I go on record that's the dumbest fucking thing ever <coughs> they get up to the ring and they go like this hmm. like they don't care but their shit don't stand earn that that's after the match that's after people have either been acclimatized to hate you or love you you know when you raise that hand. You know, it's like Stone Cold getting up there and doing this, people go nuts. And before Randy Orton turned into a, you know, sort of a weird baby face, he'd get up and just do this, or Edge would do this, and they, they hate him. They want to see him get lynched or whatever. You know, so it's just a matter of finding what it is. So if, if I'm the heel and you get in the ring, I stop on you and right out the gate, I'm being a dickhead. Do, 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 do. I take too long, I come back, move. Get up that elbow, up he comes. Bip, 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 and I powder out. Now I can play over. And instead of you just standing there going, yeah, look what I did, you got it. You know, now the story is it's, it's set. I can do no wrong, you can do no wrong. I'm a douche, he's a hero. Story told. Whatever we do from here until the dollar is it's set. So just, it's all, long story short, in closing, it's storytelling, it's athletic theater. So if we work together with each other to figure out what the best story is, so, I don't know what this guy, or I don't know what to do with this guy, or this, that, and more. What can we do? Figure it out. And you know, good guys can be good guys, bad guys can be bad guys. If you need to cheat a little bit here and there for whatever the situation is, you use your brains and act according. And that's how like, the Hunter the Triple H's or the Shawn Michaels have kind of evolved the system. So we find a place where it needs to be, but Long story short, in closing, use your brains and common sense. Yeah, it's dangerous thing to say. But have fun, be creative. Don't just do standard 
thing like, you know, you tackle, drop down, hit, toss, drop down. So what? We've seen it a billion times. Why, why, why not? Two tackles, go to this an elbow on the drop down, the drop down guy gets up, does something, but why can't you think out of the box? Something so simple to something so complex. You create your art unique. You're gonna be an artist, you're not gonna paint the exact same picture that you saw at the gallery down the street. So why would you do that in this ring, you know? So uh, if you got, if you, you got like a Tajiri kind of ROH kind of look or whatever, so my assumption is, is you like ROH and all that kind of stuff? Maybe, maybe I could be wrong, I don't know. Do you like an old school guy that you like the, you know, the, the white uh, and curled beers and that kind of stuff? Weird name drops. Those were our trainers. Those were your Yeah, that's so funny. See how good I am? <laughs> But like, you know, you just figure out what, what, where your influences are and what works for you and tweak it and make everything your own and reinvent the wheel. Like I'm not saying, I mean, come up with everything from scratch. Like there's a whole history and a whole awesome backlog of this business that you can draw it. Yeah, but you know, I mean, there's an old term for the time that just stole it fair and square. You decide to take the Colonel De Beers and do like that and that running bulldog into the turnbuckle or whatever. Just find maybe a unique way to go into it. And then when the commentators are talking and they're asking for Clips about yourself and you say, Yeah, I was uh, trained by Colonel Beers and I do that move because I'm honoring my teacher. Or, I, this, is what, this is the move I used to put out Colonel De Beers, but so I took it. You know, make up whatever fiction you want, like have some sort of rhyme or reason for stuff. You know? It's like the whole Luke, I'm your father. Well, there's a story. There. So, what's your story? What's your story? What's your story? You know, find different things. Yeah. In closing, be creative, be safe. Use your common sense. Tell us more. The end.